What's up, everybody, and thank you for joining us on our first official recruiting roundup segment. Now, uh, we're going to do these once a week, probably every Tuesday. Uh, stuff starts going really fast. We may start doing two a week, maybe one on Tuesday and one on Friday. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to bring on uh, really our correspondents for the J-Boy Show, um, some of the guys that I really count on for recruiting. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to uh, Philip Dukes, uh, one of my uh to be honest with you, one of my most trusted guys when it comes to this stuff. Uh, he's somebody that's a huge friend of the show. Uh, you can follow him at Dukes the Scoop on Twitter. And again, he's a guy that's really plugged in, a uh, friend with a lot of former players. And uh, again, a guy I think you guys are really going to enjoy and somebody that, you know, we're, we're super excited just to have a chance to talk to and uh, let him fill us in on what he knows kind of compared to what we know. And I think it's something you guys are really going to be excited about. Uh, we're going to stick with football with him. Uh, we're going to start out with football, hit everything, and then I'll move on to basketball. Obviously, with the, the big news with Kaminga releasing his list and obviously Mac McClung coming down to the wire. So appreciate you guys tuning in it's going to be a jam-packed show uh, i expect this one to be uh, one of our best it's going to really be focused narrowly on recruiting and really just giving you guys kind of up to date on what we think i uh, appreciate you guys a lot uh, remember you can find us on twitter at the jboy show on instagram it's duh d-a-j-b-o-y show uh, obviously on facebook it's the jboy show and on youtube it's the jboy show appreciate you guys let's get it Philip Dukes, man, really glad you can join us. One of the most plugged in people in the recruiting game, especially when it comes to Auburn. Uh, a guy we had to get on the show, a guy that I've talked to many times. And, uh, man, it's an honor to have you on here, man. Hey, man, I super, super appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure, man, an honor and a pleasure to be on the show, man. I've been watching what you've been doing. Uh, number one trending show in the game right now. So <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just glad you're having me, dog. Hey, man, well, shoot, I appreciate it. And, then again, you know, our audience there. They're unreal, and and it's uh, we're both along for the ride. We're helping each other, so uh, it's a good deal, man. And and but let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Let's talk some Auburn football recruiting. Um, as you already know, we we at the J Boy Show were the first ones to predict uh, Jaden Roberts commit committing to Auburn tomorrow, so Wednesday at noon. Uh, we feel really good about that. And it's another guy they've gotten from Texas. You got Demetrius Davis. Now they're both from North Shore. Uh, a kid named Landon King, uh, Big Twelve Texas decommit. We feel like we haven't made a prediction yet, but but we feel like we could be trending toward that way. Is this the Chad Morris effect, Auburn going into Texas, do you think? I mean, you're a guy that kind of knows what's going on behind the scenes. Is that is that their strategy, or are they just going where the prospects are? Uh, most definitely. I think uh, so. You have to go back and really realize that Chad Morris, before he was at Arkansas, was already at SMU. So mm -hmm. having those ties and not even go back, not even to go as far back to the high school game where he has, he, he's done some legendary things. Yeah. But just him being at SMU recruiting and then even recruiting in Arkansas, he didn't do as well as he would have liked to when he was at Arkansas and uh, not to take a shot at the Razorbacks, but they, they've been a program on the decline for a few years. So of course it's going to be a little harder to get some of those recruits to go to Arkansas. Now think about it. If you are recruiting Texas and and you're a believer in the Chad Morris's principles and the, uh, the the type of scheme that he puts together, uh, even going back to Clemson, would you? It's, it's almost like you see a guy come pull up and he's in a beat up Chevy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no disrespect, to Arkansas, but <laughs> then you see a guy come by. You see a guy come back in a Mercedes Benz, which would be the Auburn Benz. It's yep. going to be a little bit easier for you to get some of those guys that want to cross those state lines. And exactly. This, and, and I and what one thing I did like that he did more than anything was that he solidified his class with the quarterback first. And if you yeah. have a quarterback who's popular, this guy who's very charismatic and he's doing a lot of help behind the scenes as far as Auburn recruiting, it's going to make his job easier, as you can see with the other guy from North Shore and mm -hmm. uh King, who I think will be committing to Auburn as well. Yes, and and again, it's it's something where they're not just players from Texas; they're quality players, and they're different type of players. You have you know a dual threat quarterback, a big time offensive lineman. Really, to me, uh, Landon King's kind of a flex Y. You know, some a guy you can kind of do a few things with, a big bodied guy. And and when you're looking at Auburn's recruiting class right now, and they've really picked up a ton of momentum lately. Uh, obviously, with uh, you know Garner Langlo, uh, Caleb Johnson, those guys down there, they picked in Florida, and then Tarvarish Dawson as well. You know, I, I'm looking at Auburn, and it really feels like the further we go here, because they're still in on some huge guys. Can you kind of talk about a few 
a few huge guys, high profile guys that's Auburn still in on and kind of where they sit? Um, so there's one commitment that's coming up pretty soon, which will be Ian Jackson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Ian Jackson, who is a heavy Alabama lean, is really considering Auburn right now. Uh, hit so the original deal with Ian was that uh, Auburn wanted to evaluate him more when spring came around, and of course, the pandemic uh, pretty much canceled all of that, mm-hmm. and uh, so. Auburn is in a is in a kind of difficult position when it comes to recruit a linebacker because the linebacker room is so full. Yeah. Now, I do feel as if if Auburn was ha- was to have a year where you didn't have a KJ Britt, you didn't have a Owen Papo, you didn't have a Zacoby McClain, you didn't have a Chandler Wooten, mm-hmm. not even to mention the three guys that we signed in the last cycle. Yeah. Then uh, of course their 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 efforts when it came to Ian Jackson would have been ramped up earlier. But uh, as it stands. When you can only really have like so, put yourself in the mind of of Auburn right now. Would you want to sign multiple, and, and would you want to sign multiple guys at linebacker, knowing that the attrition that we've already undergone when it comes to the the offensive lineman situation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think uh, where we are as far as with Ian Jackson is, we got in the game a little late as far as ramping up our efforts. Yeah. But I, I will say that he has definitely gotten the five-star treatment as far as the over the last couple of weeks, as far as making sure that he was known that he's wanted. We're making it known. Yeah. And I say we as well, just as an Auburn fan, but Auburn is making it known that he's wanted at Auburn. And I think it's something hard for him to decide on basically with his parents, with his mom being an Auburn grad, uh, his uncles are, are huge Auburn fans. I think it's something that he's heavily considering. Another guy that I think that also has family ties to Auburn that would be that we're still in on would be Dylan Brooks out of Tennessee. From yeah, Auburn. I was going to ask you about him. He's a guy that I think as the season progresses, you know, I I don't I don't know if Tennessee is going to have a breakout year, but I I just see him and it's Jarris McIntyre, correct? That's the family connection. Yeah, yes, the McIntyre family is related. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him flip back. Now, that's just – that that's me. That's me saying that, you know. And, again, I think you may kind of feel the same way a little bit. I think that – I would say uh, that it's just as likely for Dylan Brooks as it would be at Ian Jackson, if, that, if, 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 if I could put a bow on it that way. Yeah. So I do feel good about Ian Jackson, but I'm I, I wouldn't say I'm 60-40. I would say I'm about 50-50. And I'm the same way on Dylan Brooks. Yeah. And and what we have to realize is that the pandemic has changed everything. Yeah. So as far as uh we there is no spring ball. We're not seeing a seven on seven season. We're not seeing a lot of the camps. So things could totally change. Like let's say, you know, Lord forbid anything bad were to happen, but these rankings change all the time. It's mm-hmm. definitely a fluid situation. So with Dylan Brooks. We look at a guy, a tall guy, he has the frame to put on a whole lot of weight. But right now, do you see that frame being able to start next year in the SEC? Yeah. And I think that's one of the major things that Auburn is preaching is like, hey, you know what? We're not going to make you any empty promises. But we do know with your skills, with your raw skills and what you're already in, what you're already able to do, the bendability that you have in your hips, your frame, your speed, we feel like you can be a premier defender on our defense. Now, with the Tennessee commitment, as you can see, Tennessee has made a huge push to get guys locked in early yeah. in order to make a decision because they know when 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 the campus when the official visit times come around, everything opens back up. You're going to have guys that are going to see things that they weren't able to see virtually. That's going to make it harder for Tennessee to keep some of those commitments. Yeah. So I really think that uh, Dylan Brooks is one to keep your eye on. Yeah, I I agree too, and and kind of sticking to to the linebacker position, obviously. Really, uh, in my opinion, I think he's Auburn's biggest target out there because I think he may be the best linebacker in the country. Is Small Munden? You know, kind of where are you? I know you, you know you you kind of have some insight in, into his recruitment and where's Auburn? I know I've heard Georgia. There's some rumblings about some other teams with Small Munden. Kind of where do you see his recruitment at today? I think that Small is one of the top recruits on our board. I think that the efforts have been increased. Uh, Auburn is doing a very, very quality job of recruiting a guy. Uh, smart kid. He uh, uh, definitely has all the physical tools that you would look for in a linebacker. In my opinion, he is the best linebacker in the country. I agree. Uh, and Auburn really is pulling out all the stops uh, within 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 reason mm-hmm. that they can in order to make sure that, that he knows that he's wanted. And I do feel that uh, 
Auburn is really making a strong push in that, on decision day. Uh, so I will pull one nugget out is that he's always had – anytime he makes a video, if you go look, he never puts his recruitment date down, but he always said he wanted to uh, commit in June. Mm-hmm. Uh, his commitment date, excuse me. Yeah. I'm sure that that has a lot to do with Auburn. If it wasn't for the for the uh, efforts of the Auburn staff, I feel like he would have already committed. And uh, okay. a lot of people in the industry have felt like he had a silent commit to Georgia. And right now, I think that that silent commit is almost at a hush. So if I were to, if I were to predict it, I would say he's about 50-50 right now. Wow, that that would be one that, you know, obviously if he does announce in June, that's still going to be a dogfight all the way till the end. Now is really kind of kind of taking a step back and, and looking, uh, even in 2022, there, there's a running back that that mean you kind of talked about in the pre-show, and he's a guy that I know Auburn's really high on. And uh, he's going to be a big time guy. Can you kind of talk about uh, Emmanuel Henderson for a second? So this guy has some of the most amazing tape that I've seen. I, I love watching this tape. It's actually fun. It's not work. It's really like just watching Barry Sanders highlights. And I'm not comparing him to Barry Sanders, but the, but that's the same type of excitement and joy I get mm-hmm. out of watching this kid. I mean, to see a kid who's a uh, tenth grade last year going a uh, rising junior uh, to see just to see with the, the reckless abandon that he runs with the uh, the speed that he gets in in the first 10 and how quick he gets to his top speed is unbelievable. If I were to compare him to anybody that I've seen, he would be more kind of like a, 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 a taller version of Cadillac. Yeah. Well, and Cadillac uh, would be coaching him. Right, right, right. right. Which bodes well for us. Uh, you know, Alabama kid uh, down there in Geneva. Uh, he's actually coached by a uh, former Auburn quarterback who was on the 99 team. Okay. And uh, I think Auburn has a really good shot. Of course, Bama is in it. Uh, you know, I, I think that if I were to make a prediction, it's going to come down to Alabama, Auburn. Yeah. Of course, it's very, very early. Uh, but that is somebody that I really enjoy watching. And uh, if you, anybody who's listening, if you get a chance, man, go check the kid out. Great kid out of the state of Alabama. And I think that if he stays home, it'll be between it. If he stays home, which I think he will, it'll be between Alabama and Auburn all the way down to the wire. Exactly. And that's exactly what I've heard. Now, now moving to the offensive side of the ball, you know, tight ends are really kind of intriguing position right now, because I mean, to be honest with you, and I think you'll agree with me, I've never seen more quality tight ends in one class than you have in this one. And if you really look at at the ones that are out there, and like I kind of said at the beginning of the show, we've really predicted that you know, Landon King, the Texas D commit, is going to commit to Auburn. Uh, I'm hearing Lake McCree, thanks to to another correspondent uh, from the J-Boy show, I'm hearing Lake McCree is actually going to commit to USC out in California. And if that happens, I would not be shocked uh, to see Landon King come right behind him and commit. Have you heard anything kind of on that front? I know you mentioned that you thought Landon was kind of close as well. Yeah, I definitely think uh, Landon is close. Um I think he's one of the guys that'll fit well in what Chad Morris wants to do, which is uh, utilize a move tight end somebody and get somebody in the offense that's going to make the safeties and the linebackers uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a perfect fit for Auburn. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a uh, sort of like a, a Anthony Mix type deal, yeah, where, where he's big enough he, he he could play wide receiver if you need him to, or or if you want to go even if, if you want to go even more recent, more so like a. Maybe a slightly more athletic Sal Canelo. Yeah. Not to take anything away from Sal, because Sal was a hell of an athlete and is a hell of an athlete, amongst other things. But yeah, I definitely think that uh, Landon King would be a perfect fit for Auburn and what Chad Morris wants to do. Yeah, I, I think that's a great comparison. And, and again, I really like his film. And and I, me and you, I, I think I've kind of gotten the same information. You know, earlier, a shoot a couple weeks ago, we were talking about a guy named Latrell Neville. Uh, that's a Virginia Tech commit. Uh, obviously, Demetrius Davis, the quarterback, that's now an Auburn commit, a uh, teammate of Jaden Roberts, who we're projecting to be an Auburn commit as of tomorrow at noon. Uh, he's a guy that we thought uh, may flip to Auburn after Demetrius did, but uh, I've kind of heard through my context that the staff may be slow playing him because there's a certain wide receiver at Texas A&M and even one that may be committed to Ole Miss that Auburn really, really likes. I don't know how much in detail you can go about that, but, uh, you know, the Banks kid that's committed from a and I know is really high on the coaching staff's board. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Auburn has put itself in a really, really good position when it comes to the wide receiver spot. Uh, not even to mention the, the guys that came in from last year's uh, class. Uh, Capers is one from uh, Denmark, and yes. Alpharetta is one that they're really high on. Yes. But you got to look at the wide receiver room. So Auburn is able to take his pick. 
Now, I, I wouldn't be able to say if they're slow playing him or not, but I will say that Auburn is really evaluating their options and looking at how many seats they have available yep. at the table, if you get what I'm saying. Yes. But I definitely uh, – his tape was was really good to look at. But, I mean, it right now uh, I'm really excited about where Auburn has been with their evaluation process and making sure they get the best fit for not last year's offense or the year before's, but – Right now, they're looking for the best fit for Chad Morris's offense, and uh, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. And, and again, I think it's it's always nice when you're able to be picky at a position because you do have talent right. there. And it just it's kind of I think where Auburn is at linebacker right now too. I think that's kind of a c- comparable deal. Now, now talking about some of the commitments that Auburn has, I know we mentioned them before, uh, and and me and you talked about this before the show, but. Uh, who is the most underrated commitment that Auburn has right now? And I got a pretty good idea who you're going to say because he just dropped 40 spots in the rankings, which absolutely blows my mind. I even I never talk about stars, but I actually tweeted about it. What, uh, who do you think? Uh, Lee Hunter, exactly. absolutely, yeah, absolute beast, absolute beast. Uh, just watching him, man, that big body, uh, seeing how he literally shreds offensive linemen. He's playing in good football down there. He's, he's out of the uh, program at Blunt High School in Mobile. We've had very good luck uh, out of the Mobile area with Auburn recruits. Yeah. Uh, guy he reminds me of, uh, and I actually said this on Twitter, and he actually responded to it. Can I guess? Marco- go, oh, yeah, you said it. My bad. I was going to guess. Go ahead. You said Marco- Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to yeah, say I- Nick Fairley. They're both from down there, but, uh, but I-, I like your comp too. And and and, a re- and I would say body size, he's more so like the uh, the Nick Fairley. Mm-hmm. But I would say as far as personality, his mindset, his intensity, yeah. and the, the kind of that old, he, he kind of has an old soul about himself that allows him to be able to use his fundamentals and able to be successful. Now, see, when you're a bigger guy and you're as strong as he is, it's always easy to rely on that, especially when you're facing inferior competition in high school. But what he does, he, he he's so technically sound that there's no way that I see how he could drop 40 spots. Like, But once the, once the season starts and they start to see how much he's grown and how he's working with his coaches in it and what he's picking up as far as his fundamentals and playing different techniques along the defensive line, there's no way he, he – I, in my opinion, there's no way that he ends the year without being a five-star. I think you're exactly right. I was actually about to say that. I think he has a really good chance. And and sticking uh, to the commitment list right now, and we talked about being able to be picky at positions. Running back is another position where Auburn feels pretty good about what they have. I mean, you sign five-star Tank Bigsby, you know, all-world, a guy that we had Brad Lester on the show who's training him. That, and, you know, Brad knows backs as good as anybody. Right, and and right. he's as high on this guy as he is about any guy, you know, that he's talked about. Now, for, for Auburn to take a commitment from Armani Goodwin, the kid from Trustful, I mean, that speaks a lot. He's a four-star, and I, I love this kid's tape. I, I think I understand oh why Auburn took him, and I think he's a guy that's going to be able to, to do some things. You know, you'd love to be able to redshirt him, especially at running back. But, you know, with Emmanuel Henderson in 2022, him being sandwiched in between Tank and Emmanuel, I think he may be a guy that can sneak up and surprise some Auburn fans. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and there are other guys in 2022 that Auburn likes. I just think that I just think that <clears throat> that Emmanuel will probably be the cream of the cop, crop as far right. as our recruitment goes. But I will say that Armani is, is, is an entity of his own. He, he The things that he does as far as – and what I like most about him, he kind of reminds me of a, a – of a straight line speed, faster Devontae Freeman. If you notice how Devontae Freeman breaks arm tackles, uh, he gets the point A to point B super fast. And if you put him in a phone booth, you're not going to be able to touch yeah. him. Armani Goodwin's the same guy. Uh, you can play flag football with him, it, 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 and, and he wouldn't get touched. Yeah. And if he does, you're going to break your arm. That's how hard. Yeah, he's he 200 runs. pounds. I mean, he's he's five eight and he's 200 pounds. So I mean, he's, yeah, he's not five. a little. You know, he's not a, a thin speed guy. Just a speed guy. You know. And you also have to look at who's recruiting them, right? Yeah. So if you look yeah. at Cadillac's playing style, when he was at Auburn, he's not the type of guy who's going to go down on first contact, right? Yeah. No, and never. I think he, and he definitely likes those guys. So if you look at since he's been the running backs coach and the guys that he's recruited, he he's recruiting straight dogs, man. Guys that may be undersized or who may not have the 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 NFL measurables. Excuse me. That are still going to fight for that extra yard. That are still going to not go down and. It, and, and they kind of give you that Earl Campbell tearaway jersey effect. Like, hey, if you stick your arm out there, it might come back broken. So yeah. you might pull back a nub to say. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Amari Goodwin's – and I'm really excited about the Auburn running backs room. 
another guy that uh, not really heralded at this moment, but he was a high, uh, a highly ranked recruit, Mark Anthony Richards. Yes. They are super, super excited about him and some of the things he can do. Uh, what I saw was a, maybe a baby version of Carrion Johnson. You mix that in with the Tank Bixby. You mix that in with the ball security and, and, and the hitting the hole efforts of DJ Williams. I mean, we we, we literally have a loaded running yeah. back. Yeah, it's a stable. And, it's a stable. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to – and I think one of the most underrated parts of Goodwin's game is his ability to catch the ball. Yeah, I, I agree. And, again, like you said, he's 200 pounds, so you know he probably can pass protect or he'll have a chance to be able to, to stunt some guys up and be able to hold his own, you know, even as a young guy. But, but looking at the offensive line right now, Obviously, Auburn has the the dual commits from uh, Ocala, the Caleb Johnson, Garner Langlo kids that we mentioned. And obviously, we think Jaden Roberts is going to make it three. You know, I'm hearing a lot of things from behind the scenes saying Auburn wants to oversign in this offensive line class. And I know the Brockmeyer twins, the, the you know, the big time guys, the, the twins, brothers, whatever, you know, have Auburn yeah. in the top four. But but I'm here in Alabama for those guys. Yeah, I, I've heard similar uh I think that we're making efforts and we're leaving no stone unturned yeah. and we're definitely uh, turning over the big stones. But it's sometimes, you know, things may not be a fit. Yeah, and, yeah, you're not going to get all you, of them. And, and you can't win them all. But I do think that Auburn has made a very, very, very strong effort in adding uh, just size, man. I mean, these guys that we're bringing in now are huge. Yeah. One guy that we're talking about is Gooch. I think he's uh, the guy from Tennessee. Yeah. I think he's a, de- a developmental project. But I think that somebody if, if somebody that size, and when I looked at the tape, he's pretty nimble on his feet. So when Auburn is thinking, okay, when we need – and one of our biggest problems in the past few years has been when we need fourth and one, can we just lean exactly. on Exactly. And I, I think that Big Nail is doing a good job of getting some guys that can just lean on you. We don't want, we don't, we don't want to go back and forth on fourth and one. No. We want to be able to lean and make sure that we can get it, whether it be quarterback sneak, we don't want to have to be as gimmicky at, at times as we've been in the past or run things that we may – you know, you know, having an outsmart defense. Yeah. If I would say one thing about uh, our rival across to, in Tuscaloosa is that when it comes down to certain situations, they don't really overthink it. They just – Yeah, they, they just think say, they're hey. better than you. Like, they we're just going to line up yeah. and be better than you. And I think that we're just going to lean on some people in the coming years, and I'm really excited about us getting the guys that are technically sound as well as just having the physical measurables that you need to be successful in the trenches. I think that's a great point. Now, now I know our audience is probably saying, you know, what do you, what do you think Gooch is? Do you think he's a guy that's going to end up being a defensive end? Or are they going to turn him into a tackle? I mean, he's six eight three forty. I mean, and again, he's nimble on his feet. That just screams offensive tackle to me. Yeah, de- definitely tackle. Uh, uh, Barring any unforeseen circumstances like him shrinking, he'll definitely be a tackle. <laughs> yeah, if he shrinks, then there, there needs to be – somebody needs to do some – they need to call Project Blue Book or something, <laughs> and somebody needs to get down there and get, get in there and get some answers. But, uh, right, but no, right. let's – I do – I, I kind of want to move on. Um, I know, you know, obviously you're, you're way more involved in the football recruiting uh, than the basketball recruiting, but I do know that you know people, and, and I'm going to get kind of little – into Mac McClung and, and Jonathan Kaminga and all that stuff a little bit later. But I just just kind of wanted your opinion before we talked a little bit of analysis about, about the Auburn team. Just what can you say about what Bruce Pearl's done at Auburn? I mean, it's it's incredible. So Bruce Pearl recognized that Atlanta is overflowing with basketball prospects. Yeah, which is where you're from, he's correct? Made, yeah, he's definitely, I am. I'm a native of College Park, Georgia, and uh, – Seeing what the the efforts like, I know plenty of guys that went to high school with me that train guys that say Bruce Pearl is so adamant about Atlanta. I mean, when he gets here, he's come and he's not just going to high school games; he's going to training sessions, he's going to practices, he's making sure that he's visible. He's put his imprint in Atlanta. So when you think, you, and you've got to think with all of the uh, outside of Anthony Edwards, pretty much the top flight recruits that have coming out of Atlanta recently. If they have not the closest school out of the major three in the area, which would be Georgia, Georgia Tech, and Auburn, Auburn has always been a finalist for the majority yeah. of them. So I think Bruce Pearl is really doing a good job. And I think and I think that the Atlanta area is what's really propelling him to go. Now he can go other places. Now he can make sure he stays okay at home in Alabama because they, they got some good recruits coming out this year. Yeah. But he's able to take – but I think what he's done is grown to all – you capitalized on the Final Four visit in order for us to, or the Final Four trip, in order for us to increase our brand, our, 
our, our, our brand awareness amongst AAU circuit, yes. the Nike EYBL yes. League, and guys who know this, hey, man, you know, Bruce Pearl really knows what's going on. And then he's putting guys in a, in a, in a, in a, in a particular predicament to succeed. When Okoro, Isaac, when Okoro got to Auburn, nobody expected him for, for him to be a lottery pick. No. Unheralded. But what Bruce is able to do with his uh, basketball mind is to put people in the best positions in order for them to succeed and to showcase their talents. With me, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between Mustafa Heron and Isaac Okoro when they first got there as far as the 6'5", the athletic build, being able to do all the dirty work. Yeah. But the athleticism that Isaac Okoro is what set him apart from so from uh, Mustafa Heron. So his defense and and Bruce being able to showcase him in order to make sure that he gets that type of recognition. And I think another thing that recruits like is that Bruce Pearl said, hey, Isaac, this is probably going to be your best shot. Hey, I, I, I would love I would love to be selfish and ask you to come back. Yeah. But he gave him his blessing to go. Exactly. And I think that's going to be a long way for Auburn being in the mix with a lot of these top flight recruits. Oh, no doubt, because he can go right back in that high school and actually go to a kid and say, look, I am going to do what's best for you. I don't have to sit here and just get you convince you of that. Look at what Isaac Okoro did. And that doesn't mean it has to be from a teacher and it could be at another school. I mean, a lot of these guys know each other because of that AAU circuit. And and I want to keep you on to talk, talk a little bit about this basketball recruiting. And I know we kind of didn't plan that, but you have such a good mind when it comes to kind of reading the tea leaves and seeing things that, that and I do know you know people, and especially being from Atlanta. But from what I'm seeing right now, and, and again, uh, you know, we were the first to break that Auburn had reached out to Mac McClung and there's mutual interest interest you know talked about him being in uh, them being in his top seven and uh, you know again as of literally last night before I got a call this morning uh, from a guy that I know that I trust you know Auburn uh, was apparently still the leader but what I am hearing now is that Jonathan Kaminga cannot get into Duke academically so Duke is out now again I, that's from my guy uh, that's and I trust him um, I've I would not be surprised if that was the truth. Now, that being said, he cannot go to the G League this year because he's too young unless they make an exemption, which I would be very surprised if they were to do that for one player. So if he were to reclassify, which the fact that it's been this long since he said he's not going to reclassify or I am going to reclassify makes me think he's going to reclassify. And what the guy I talked to said this morning was Auburn feels very good about where they're at with Jonathan Kaminga right now. And I'm wondering if that is having an effect. And my guy said that may be having an effect on the top three that Mac McClung is going to put out or may not because Auburn, I think Auburn may be feeling so good about Kaminga that they may be slow playing McClung here. So uh, <clears throat> the first heard, the first I heard was that Matt McClung was really high on Auburn. Um, I did notice that there may that Texas Tech has definitely made a move mm -hmm. uh, in the in the past week or so. Um, what I'm also hearing with Kaminga is that when you have that, so and you and you and, and you have to be uh, cognizant of the situation. Yeah, Kaminga is in the same class as a Jalen Green. So when you've got guys with those type with that type of talent who who are in those top 10 or top 15, top five, however you want to call it because it's all fluid. Things happen that don't normally happen. So there could be a, 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 a G League exception that comes out of the blue because somebody knows somebody mm -hmm. and this guy really wants to go. I mean, so when you get into that type of high-level recruitment, then it's almost impossible to kind of to, to kind of really, really – read the tea leaves as clearly as you would in other type of recruitment. Yeah, that's a good point. Now what I will now what I will say is that I do feel confident that as long as things stay where they are that we will get one of the two. I agree. I do feel that way. I do feel that way. But I would I, I but I can't say in confidence which one at this point because every every day is almost like as the world turns. Like you hear something different. Yeah. Of course uh when when you are involved and you do have sources, you have to kind of take things with a grain of salt yep. at times. But I have been hearing that Auburn is definitely involved in both cases and that uh it's, it may it may sort of be one of those domino effect type things. If if A happens then B happens. If A if B doesn't happen then A may happen. So yeah, I, at this point I think it's yeah I, I I would like I would love to be the first person with the information but at this point it's too fluid. But I definitely feel good about us landing one of the two. I, I agree. And and again like like you said, I mean it's almost yo yoed really three times. It's 
it's almost like a game where you, you think the last team with the ball is going to win. So, you know, right, again, I, right. I think Auburn has put themselves in a good position. I, I know there's been a lot of smoke about Wake Forest. Um, I know Forbes has done a pretty good job with them. But, again, I'm just such a firm believer in a lot of times, you know, the first person to kind of get in there and blow your mind, especially kind of talking with McClung and Bruce, uh, I would not be shocked to see Auburn in the top three um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be shocked if he uh, threw out a top four and it was Auburn, Memphis, Texas Tech, and Wake Forest. But Texas Tech with David Moretti declaring, you know, I don't think that's that big of a deal because Auburn lost Samir Dowdy. I mean, the, Auburn needs somebody to come in and play the two. And if you're picking between Mac Kung or Jonathan Kaminga, you know, it, right now, again, like I said this a million times, we never predicted – you know, Mac McClung to Auburn or any of that stuff. We're just going to, we're not going to sit here and make up news because it's news. So from what I'm hearing right now, I, I don't want to go away from what I heard first because it hasn't really been, you know, it hasn't really been uh, beaten down to say. Right. Right. I mean, and, and, I, and I think that's a safe approach as far as the uh, keep your integrity with, yeah. with, with the, with the amount of listeners that you have yeah. and the people that trust you. Yeah. Cause, cause I'm not going to lie to them. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I know for a fact that cause I, right now, Nobody except Mac McClung and Jonathan Kaminga know for 100% what's going on. But we're probably exactly. going to be about as close as you can get to finding out. Because, again, I mean, when it comes back to it, you know, we're eight for eight right now. You know, what, what did Wayne say? Right, right. Women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. And, and that's because, no, again, don't. you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. But it's going to be crazy, and I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it changed three times before the next two days. But, uh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah move, kind of moving on from basketball, I mean, that, that's really the only thing on the forefront now between those two. You know, you had a few tweets today, and, and audience, you need to go follow this guy. It's at Dukes the Scoop. I'll spell it out for you. It's at D-U-K-E-S-T-H-E. S C O O P. This guy's a great follow. Um, very knowledgeable. You, you had a few tweets today. I'm going to kind of uh, pick uh, from one of them. I really liked, and you really kind of talked about Bo Nix in this Chad Morris offense. And you kind of talked about the progressions and you kind of talk about, it allows the QB to be more cerebral, which to me means he has more options to true choose from instead of you have one read to read. Oh no. You know, can you kind of go into that a little bit? And really, you know, what you were kind of saying in that tweet. So I think uh, last year, from what I heard, uh, Bo was able to do things uh, pre-snap reads that we hadn't really seen before. Mm -hmm. Like even uh, – so let's go back to the Oregon game. So that's – so when Seth, William, when Seth Williams catches the winning touchdown, that's by about 90% Bo Nix, right? Yes. So I think that – Gus Malzahn hired a coordinator, one that he trusts, two that he could kind of not so much as be the guy just kind of leading the offense and I'll take some of your input, but somebody that he can really trust and also learn from. And I think that the learning process is not just going to be Bo Nix, it's also going to be Gus Malzahn. So I think my tweet was based on something I heard was saying that through some of the Zoom meetings and some some of the early some of the uh, early conferences that that they, that they've been having the level of questioning that Bo Nix had about the offense is leading people to believe that if he can answer these questions in the quiz that he'll be able to perform well on the test if that mm. makes sense. Yes, yes. So uh, I definitely think that uh, one of the biggest draws and one of the reasons why Gus. Well, I will say this: Gus was so so last year. You got to think about it. Everybody was clamoring for Joey Gatewood, and why aren't we playing Gatewood in this offense? But I think Gus really, really respects the mind of Bo Nix, and not just his physical ability, mm -hmm. but where he is mentally. And I think that another year, as far as being on the college level in the SEC, hey, you got to think, it's not easy to start as a true uh, freshman in the SEC. No, it's people I mean, don't people freshman? don't understand. That's that's like trying to be the CEO on your first day of the job. Exactly. I mean, the core, and, and we're talking about not just the quarterback, but you're also the leader of the team. You're the face yeah. of the team. Yeah. If the team wins, it's going to be because you did A, B, or C. And uh, for him to be able to take on that responsibility and the hopes and dreams of Auburn Nation and to be able to perform as well as he did, it was incredible. So I think that now with another year of, of, of comfortability and in in, in a new offense, but an offense that's going to be more, in his own words, he said it's quarterback friendly. Yeah. So if you look at what Chad Morris was able to do when he had those type of top tier quarterbacks, he's obliterated defenses. And I think that where we are now, from what I'm hearing, the defense is even 
the defense is starting to get excited about what they're seeing from the offense, yeah. even virtually. Yeah. So, so uh, and that's a big a deal. Of- people, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the the defense, especially being the defensive coach for so long, you know, sometimes you go out to practice and, you know, you never want to lose a rep. You always want the defense to win. But there's also times when you kind of leave practice and you go over to the offensive coaches and you're kind of like, man, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like seeing y'all <laughs> doing some of those things out there. It's, that's going to give guys problems because defensive guys know, you know, that's, you're putting us in a predicament and whether it's, you know, getting one-on-one in space or whether, you know, you're, you're muddy in the reeds for the backers or the safeties or whatever, you know, there's some things that defensive guys say, Whoa, now uh, we, it's like I had junior Rose green on here and he would talk about the defense was so good. It made the offense that much better. Exactly. And I think that being able to have those, not just to be able to say, okay, so a lot of times, if you notice, like there've been times in the past where, we will see something fans would say, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to put myself in the position of being an Auburn coach or anything like that. But I would just say as a fan, you would say, man, we just did that. Or you will see the rep, you, you will see that some things may, may have become repetitive or yeah. you may be, you, and you may have been even able to call something before it happened. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes. But I think that, but I think that this year, we're going to see more of that, more of that unpredictability based on the fact that he's going to have more options. And I think that's the most important thing that if you have a coach's kid, a, a, a kid that's a a, a, stu- a, 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 a a field rat, so to speak, yeah. or a student of the game, somebody who's just going to live and die in that playbook, I think that that that, that the opportunity for for Bo Nix to become that top tier quarterback, I, I, I think is a huge opportunity, and I and I, I actually think that. Bo Nix is going to be that guy for us this year. Yeah, and and again, it's it's something where I see him taking a big step as well. Now, now talking about the other side of the ball, and and this is something where you know Auburn fans uh, are familiar with how good the linebacker group is, but this mm-hmm. group has a chance to be one of the best Auburn has ever had. I mean, when you look at KJ Britt who's basically the quarterback of the defense and, in my opinion, is going to be a first-round pick. Uh, you have Zacoby McLean, who I think is the most underrated player in the defense. Can you kind of talk about that linebacker group and just how good that position group is and what that means to a defense? So, <clears throat> I think that uh, last year, with us having uh, such a dominant defensive line, we were able to see our linebackers coming to their own as far as having that free space and mm. knowing that, okay, you know what, all I have to, I don't have to beat the guard. All I have to do is get to my spot. All I have to do is play my keys because I know that those I, – I, I know that they're going to spill in front of me. I know that the player is going to be where it needs to be in order for me to be, make, be successful. This year, the linebackers are going to be the strength of the defense. So you're going to have K.J. Britt, KJ Britt, the undisputed leader of the defense, a year older, yes. physical as always. And if you think about it, a lot of times, you know, they say, okay, well, he's the classic middle linebacker. But how far do you actually need a linebacker to run? Yeah, well, my dad I mean, used to I mean, say, and, and again, he was an All-American linebacker at Auburn, played in the NFL. He used to say uh, he'd have a linebacker run a four eight forty, and he'd be like, well, you know, I ran a four seven five, and and my coach used to say if I had to run 40 yards to catch somebody, I don't want you out there. Man, I'm trying to tell you. Exactly, exactly. And that's the so, truth. That linebacker, if you're having to run 40 yards to catch somebody – you know, you probably screwed up at the beginning of the play. Exactly. So, in that 10-yard, K.J. Britt's 10-yard burst is probably some of the most explosive Mm -hmm. tape that I've seen in a long time. Uh, I love his tape. Uh, Zacoby, and and we know Owen Papo as far as uh, just being physically one one of the most gifted linebackers that we've had at Auburn in a long time. I can't think of anybody who's been as gifted at him as a true linebacker in in, in years. Uh, Zacoby McClain is just one of those guys who's just going to give you if he weighs 210, you're going to get 212 pounds of impact. Yeah. Uh, and, Ch- and Chandler Wooden is just so smart. He uh he may not be as athletically gifted, and I'm not taking anything away from him, but he may not have those natural attributes that some of his counterparts have. But what he makes up for it is he's going to be in the play and he's going to make the right play. Yeah. He's not going to he's not going to take it. And, and another thing is, he's not going to give you a shoulder and just say, "Oh well, I tried." Yeah. No hell. He textbook tackler. I love Chandler Wooden's game. And I even think about, and maybe one of the best athletes he's ever even playing, which is uh, OC Brothers. That's another guy to watch out for. Okay. OC Brothers. Physical. Yep. Yep. OC Brothers. Look him up. 6'1, 230. Can run like the wind. Uh, very physically imposing. Great tackler. That's another guy I would say to watch out for. And the class that we brought in this year is going to be another one of those cornerstone classes. Yeah. Uh, Desmond Tisdall. 
uh, play running back and linebacker in high school. If he gets the ball, he's always a threat for a pick six. Yeah, we're trying to get um, him on the show. We uh, we uh, reached out to him and and uh, actually reached out to him tonight, and, and we think he's going to get back to us. Yeah, I, def- I, I, I love Desmond Tisdall, his tape. Uh, Wesley Steiner is a guy that has impressed uh, some of the staff early on with just his his nature and the type of questions that, he, that he's asking. Yeah. You can really tell he's a student of the game. He's a really, really smart guy. If you go back and look at his high school career academically, he was near the top of the class. And he and physically, he uh, tested out as far as one of the best linebackers in the country when it came to the spark rating. Yeah. So, uh, Wesley Steiner is another guy to look out for. Uh, one of the projects that I'm really excited about that Auburn has on defense that came in on linebacker would be Cam Riley. A taller yes, guy I've heard that. Guy. I've heard that. Uh, and if I were to say anybody he reminded me of physically, maybe a inch or two shorter than Carlos Dansby, but that Man. same type of frame. So uh, I'm really excited about where the linebackers are right now. Uh, and I think one of the biggest keys that you'll see as far as to see who's going to be that next guy is to see who gets the most snaps on special teams. Yes. Uh, if you go back and look when Deshaun Davis was there and Trey Williams was there, the guy who played the most snaps on special teams is going to be the guy who's probably next in line to get snaps when the bullets start flying. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, definitely be cognizant of that coming up. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about where our linebackers are. I, I agree, man. I think that's great analysis. It's spot on. And, and again, you know, with, with your sources and who you know, it's, it's, it's always great to talk to you. And I do want to end on some recruiting, you know, right after the analysis. You know, that way we've, we've hit everything. You know, where do you think Auburn stands right now with Kool-Aid and Jeremiah Williams? Oh, man, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would venture to say that with Kool-Aid, I've seen a lot. I would say we're at about 40% out of 100. Okay. I think it's a 60-40 Bama, okay. in my opinion. Okay. Uh, I think I think Jeremiah is a little bit harder to gauge because uh, he's, still, he's still accepting guys. He's still accepting schools that may not have been involved. I mean, so you may see – Another school shoot to the top from what I'm hearing. Okay. Not 100% positive, but definitely uh, Auburn is near the top. Uh, I think that's the guy to Ramsey, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, Auburn's crazy about him. And uh, if he were to commit, man, Auburn would take it in a heartbeat. So uh, definitely uh, we're in it. And I do see that uh, recruiter effort. And, and, and I think he's just a perfect fit. Okay. If, uh, if I were to say anybody would be a fit for uh, what Coach G likes to do, Rodney Garner, it would definitely be Jeremiah Williams. So uh, I think that he would possibly be our priority on the board right now, uh, higher than anybody else as far as defensive line commits and uh, de- defensive line recruits, excuse me. And uh, also keep your eye on a couple of guys out of – I can't think of their names, but it's a couple of JUCO guys that I heard about out of New York. Yeah, If you guys okay. have your computer near or uh, Google, uh, just look at Auburn JUCO, New York City, and uh, there's a junior college up there. I don't want to say Ithaca. Is it ASA? But, uh, Is it ASA? I think so. Okay. I know ASA I can't, is up I can't there. Remember. I um J boy. So J boy, I need you to get a uh, stats guy, man. I need you to get an internet guy for me so we can make definitely, this definitely, next. definitely. I, I will, man. We <laughs> hopefully we keep growing like we do. We'll we'll have that like third guy that that I can ask to do things and that that knows technology way more than me. So again, audience, if you guys can, we can keep growing. We can keep doing those things, but uh. But, man, I, I do, before I let you go, I because, again, I, I'm sure people are like, we want more on Kaminga, we want more on McClung. I, I do think Auburn's going to be in McClung's top three. Uh, if they're not, do not freak out, because I think that says more about Jonathan Kaminga than it does about Mac McClung. But, uh, Dukes, again, uh, guys, go follow this man on Twitter. It's at Dukes the Scoop. Uh, he's, he's unreal. I'm going to get him on here as much as possible. Uh, he's an integral part of, of what's going on. And, and, again, I really thank you for coming on the show. And this is something I want to do this every week. Hey, man, hey, as, as long as we got time, well, I'll be here. Awesome, man. Well, again, I appreciate it. Is there anything you want to say, anything you want to plug other, other than your Twitter? Hey, go follow the J-Boy show. You're already there. <laughs> You're a good man, Dukes. You're a good man, brother. And, hey, hey, hey. And, no, hey what, what would we say? No, number one number one show trainer right now, right? Hey, there? yeah, we, uh, we're, we're trying to do some things over here, man. And, again, it's a, it's a family effort, and, and you've been one of those guys that's been helping it, along with our audience. And we're going we're gonna to take it as far as we can go and, and keep doing it the right way. And, shoot, man, let's uh, see if we can still keep batting a 1,000. All right, for so, sure, man. Take it easy, bro. All right, Dukes, take it easy, man. That was another right. uh, the first, actually, recruiting windup. With J Boy and Et Dukes the Scoop, aka Phil Dukes. Uh, that was the J Boy Recruiting Roundup segment, and J Boy is out of here.